seeing no further introduction of guests, it's therefore time for a member's statements. The member from Simcoe Grey. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Speaker, my constituents uh, Al Sayed and his sons uh, Irby and Emzi have been doing something amazing volunteer work in the town of New Tecumseh in recent months. Irby and Emzi both volunteered in the Canadian Cancer Society CIBC run for the cure on October 1st. They've also been active in the community gathering signatures on my petition for the redevelopment of Stevenson Memorial Hospital in Alliston. Irby and MZ are only in grade 11 and 12, and yet they fully understand the importance of the hospital's redevelopment for the future of the community, and they've taken time from their busy schedules to help build support for the project as a whole. It's wonderful to see my young constituents involved with important community initiatives, and I thank them. Mr. Speaker, I know that these young men have a very bright future in front of them. Their mother is Dr. Uh, Shazia Ambreen, a uh, physician and anesthetist at the uh, hospital in Alliston. Earlier this year, I had the pleasure of attending an awards ceremony with the College of Physicians and Surgeons. She received the uh, Ontario College Award for 2017 for being a terrific doctor. Irby and MZ told us what motivated them into action, and I quote, Alliston may well, very, very well be a small rural community compared to big urban cities like Toronto, but it sure has a big heart and a sense of a closely knit community where everyone contributes and looks after each other. Stevenson Memorial Hospital is not only an, not an ordinary hospital, it's the heart and centre of this community. We are young students and we might not know many details, but one thing we know for sure, this con community needs a bigger and up-to-date hospital to look after its growing population. Again, I want to thank this uh, astounding family, very proud to know them and proud to serve them. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Windsor West. Thank you, Speaker. I recently took part in two ride-alongs, one with Windsor Community Outreach Team, our Outreach and Support Team, also known as COAST, and the other with Assertive Community Treatment, also known as ACT. The COAST team consists of a plainclothes police officer and a crisis worker from Hotel Du Grace Healthcare. They provide on-site crisis and mental health assessments to vulnerable individuals in Windsor who are marginalized, have complex mental health and psychosocial problems, housing and financial is issues, substance abuse, physical health care needs, and frequent contact with police and hospital emergency services. They facilitate access to community services and supports in order to divert from the criminal justice system and or hospital emergency departments. ACT is a community-based model of care for individuals who have severe and persistent mental illness. They reach out to people where and when they need help in their home, at the ACT office, and in the community. They ensure a response for people who are in crisis, no matter what day of the week. They are referred to as a hospital without walls. In Windsor, they support up to 200 individuals. Speaker, one in five people suffer with mental health issues in Ontario. Many people find themselves in crisis and don't know where to go for help or can't access help quickly due to wait lists and capacity issues. Windsor's Coast and ACT teams are working very hard to provide support to those struggling with mental health issues when and where they need it. Speaker, I can say without hesitation they are making an incredible positive impact on the lives of the most vulnerable in Windsor. Windsor is a better community because of our Coast and ACT teams. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Mississauga Streetsville. Thank you, Speaker. Improvements to our GO stations in western Mississauga will continue in 2018. The Meadowvale GO station building will be completely replaced. First opened in 1981, the station building is showing its vintage. The rapidly growing number of consumers or commuters using the station building means that we need a bigger, more modern structure. Along with the new station building, which includes more accessible facilities, Meadowvale GO commuters will also see the parking lot reconfigured to make access easier and the layout more efficient. The passenger pickup and drop-off areas will be modernized. A better bus loop will both protect passengers from the weather and improve connections between the train and the bus. Some damaged and worn-out catch basins and storm sewer lines will be fixed. The Meadowvale GO parking lot will be improved. Meadowvale commuters will also benefit from better pedestrian connections and improved bicycle storage. A new Station Operations West facility will be built to accommodate future office, warehouse and parking needs for GO operations. The Station's Operations West facility will also be located in Meadowvale. Continuing improvements to all our GO stations represent action now to make commuting better, more frequent 
and more accessible, at least through the first half of the 21st century. Thank you, Speaker. <laughs> Member State, the Member from Europe, Bruce. Mr. Speaker. Last week was Treaties Recognition Week across the province, and I'm proud to share that the Blue Water District School Board in Huron Bruce participated in celebrating the history and culture of Indigenous peoples by incorporating a variety of activities in classrooms across the area, uh, across the county. And Saugeen District Secondary School, for example, orchestrated a school-wide art project and exhibit on the seven grandfather teachings: bravery, respect, love, wisdom, honesty, humility, truth. They're all values that we can embrace and move forward on and hold near to our heart. Hillcrest Central School in Teeswater focused on the roles that the Indigenous peoples played in the two world wars during the Remembrance Day ceremony. And many schools had celebrations telling Indigenous stories through song, dance, and art. Thank you to the many students who participated in Treaties Recognition Week. Continuing to build on these educational opportunities for its students, Saugeen District Secondary School will also be hosting learning activities for staff during the November 24th Professional Activity Day. I look forward to continuing to see the wonderful activities our school systems across the province have planned that help celebrate all cult cultures and our Indigenous friends. And remember the seven grandfather teachings, bravery, respect, love, wisdom, honesty, humility, and truth. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. For the member of statements, the member from Kenora, Rainy River. Thank you, Speaker. Home care in the Northwest is in shambles. This is certainly the case in Kenora Rainy River, where my offices have been hit hard by an alarming number of complaints in Kenora, Dryden, and Sulakout. The concerns are almost always the same. Patients leave hospital because the beds are needed and are assured that services will be available in their homes, only to be discharged and to find out that nobody shows up or care is, at best, sporadic. In one case, a gentleman deemed high priority because he is paralyzed, lives alone, and suffers from short-term memory loss, um, regularly experiences days where his worker does not show up. Sometimes he is told that he is not even on the list of that day's visits. He is now at the point where he has said that he will stop taking his medication altogether because the workers are never there to help him take it anyway. And now many frontline workers are threatening to walk out because they say working conditions are so bad at Paramed that there is no way to administer proper home care to clients across the region. My offices have repeatedly sounded the alarm bells about home care needs in the Northwest, and we continue to hear back from the ministry that, quote, the Lynn is monitoring their performance on an ongoing basis, unquote. Northerners cannot afford to wait while this situation is monitored or for this government to roll out some new plan. We need immediate action to improve the access and reliability of home care services in the Northwest. Thank you. The member from Scarborough Rouge River on a point of order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm very, very happy to welcome the uh, wonderful students, grade five and six, uh, from Tom Long Boat uh, School, from my riding, Scarborough Rouge River. Welcome to our. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Ottawa, Ben Yin. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I also am talking today of the, with the um, Indigenous Treaty we, uh, Recognizance Week. We know the importance for the future of Ontario to recognize indigenous population and their great contribution to the province. The importance of this week is to get closer and impose and understand well and to inform. So I want to highlight in Ottawa Vanier, the writing that I have the honor of representing, many schools participated to this school to recognize treaties. Engage with this fully to recognize the importance of, of treaty for all Ontario and for all of us. The duty to reconcile with uh, uh, Indigenous communities starts with the duty to know, the duty to understand our history, to recognize its importance, and to engage fully in on the path of reconciliation. La semaine dernière, dans le... Last week, 
in the Ottawa riding, we had the chance of celebrating Indigenous culture and acknowledge the importance of treaties for the region. We are all people of treaties. Treaty people. Merci. Merci beaucoup. The member statements, the member for Whitby Oshawa. Thank you, uh, Speaker. Every day in Durham Region, a young person makes a positive difference within his or her community. And doing good in one's community can take many forms, such as helping out an elderly neighbor without any expectation of payment or making a local park area more clean. One way to recognize these contributions, Speaker, is through the Ontario Junior Citizen Award. And this award is carried out through the Ontario Community Newspaper Association and sponsored by the TT Bank Group. Uh, the speaker, I invite all local residents in my riding of Whitby, Oshawa, to take a moment and take stock. Is there a worthy youth who deserves recognition? Is there someone you know who never fails to volunteer in the community? If there is a young adult who has taken heroic actions or a special young person who has contributed to their community while living with a disability, the nomination deadline speaker is November 30th, and downloadable nomination forms are available online at www.ocnaorg junior citizen. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you for the member from, member from, from Beaches, East York. Well, thank you, Speaker. Now, two weeks ago, I was in Alberta shooting an episode of Political Blind Date, a new TVO series that pits two politicians on opposite sides of an issue against each other. The purpose of the show is to, is to show that political opponents can have a reasonable debate on controversial issues while being respectful and enjoying each other's company. And I had the pleasure of debating carbon taxes with Shannon Stubbs, a Conservative MP from the Northern Alberta riding of Lakelands. And Ms. Stubbs staunchly defended the oil industry, seeing no merit in increasing the price of carbon, believing it would raise costs for consumers, cause job losses, and hurt the oil industry. Ms. Stubbs focused specifically on the, 500, or the $50 a ton carbon price being imposed by the federal government. At home in Ontario, we have a, a carbon price under a cap and trade program that has a cost of only $17 a ton, and proceeds from our carbon auctions so far have netted over $1.5 billion, all of which by law must be spent on programs to lead to reductions in Ontario's carbon footprint. And while in Alberta, we were discussing how electricity is being generated, and I was surprised to learn that in Alberta, most of the electricity they generate is from fossil fuels. In fact, today, they're generating about 10,600 megawatts of power, and 48% of this is coming from coal and about 45% from natural gas. And by comparison, in Ontario, we are generating nearly 18,000 megawatts when just under 2.5% of power is being generated by fossil fuels, i.e. natural gas. So I believe that Alberta has lost an opportunity because their ability to use surplus clean power to offset uh, carbon displacing fuels means that they're not able to get the advantages, and I'm very proud to be in a province which has made the right investments in electricity systems so we can lead us to a cleaner Thank you. future. For the member statements, the member from Bruce Gray Owen South. Thank you very much, Mr. S Mr. Speaker. He shoots, he scores. Today, I stand in recognition of a dedicated and truly talented young constituent who is living proof that any goal is possible with a lot of hard work and perseverance. Curtis McDermott, a 23-year-old from Solid Beach, has seen his hockey dream turn to reality as his dedication to the game earned him a spot in the LA Kings this year. He also made a splash in the NHL when he scored his first career NHL goal on October 26th. I invite the members to watch for themselves this exciting milestone via YouTube or Fox Sports. Curtis McDermott has lived and breathed hockey since the day he was born, even having his own NHL legacy to look up to, his father Paul McDermott. Paul played in the NHL in the Winnipeg Jets, Washington Capitals, and ended his career in the Quebec Nordiques, proving himself to be the best coach and role model Curtis could have. Hockey runs deep in the McDermott family as Lane McDermott, Paul's eldest son, played for the Boston Bruins, scoring his first career goal exactly 31 years after his dad. They are only the second father and son pair to score their first career goals on their first day in the NHL. And Mr. Speaker, with Paul and his brother Peter being owners of the Owen Sound Attack, the hockey tradition will certainly continue in the McDermott family. Paul McDermott and his wife Pam also run and operate a campground in Solid Beach along with Paul's parents Georgina and Don, and his brother Peter and his wife Terry Lynn. The campground, Woodland Park, exemplifies Paul's strong family values, community pride and passion for his home, Sobble Beach. Curtis McDermott's success in the NHL is especially exciting to me as he played alongside, alongside my son Zach and Novice in Shell Lake, and the two continued on to become competitors on opposing teams for several years. Every young boy and girl growing up playing hockey dreams of playing for, for a professional team. It is extremely exciting and inspiring to watch Curtis grow up playing the sport he loves and to see his dedication, hard work and dream materialize. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and best of luck, Curtis. Thank you. 
Point of order to the Minister of Education. Point of order, Speaker. Um, Speaker, thank you so much. I just wanted to take a moment to welcome all the students who are in the House today, and this is certainly part of their civic engagement. I want to thank all the educators who have brought our students here today and parents as thank well. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. I thank all members for their, their statements. It's therefore now time for reports by committees. The member from Barrie.